choose an image and start sketching. So for my hero portrait, I chose an image, and then I started sketching from it. Uh, my workflow to do my sketches is I start off with a blue color pencil to get my overall lines there, and then I like to ink it in. Um, I would recommend this workflow if you'd like to ink in your drawings because it helps when scanning it in. Um, the blue is trying to get my shape, and after I get my shape, I go in there with a Sharpie, and I get my line work in there. Uh, if I was to do this with a pencil and then ink it in, I would have to erase all the graphite away um, in order for this workflow to work. So here is my line work. I scanned it in. After I scanned it in, I now have to clean up my artwork. So here, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, make a copy of the layer, and then I will go to my levels, which is hockey command L. Uh, once it levels, I'll bring my white point down. And you can see as I bring my white point down, that blue just disappears. And then I also bump up my black point over here. And now I got a nice little bit of contrast there. I'm going to hit OK. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the color out of this. So I'm going to go Command Shift U, which is the hotkey to take to desaturate it. Or you can go to Image uh, Adjustment and um, Desaturate. Command Shift U. All right, this just makes a grayscale. You see as I zoom in here, when I come in here, there's still a little tint in there. So that's helping me out right now. Then I'm going to go in there and clean this up. So if I hit D, that'll set my brushes to default, where my black's my fill, my white's my background. Then if I hit X, it'll switch my background and my foreground colors. I hit B for my brush. I'm just going to go over here and brush some of this stuff out. Um, some of these things I don't want. So, depending on what you want in here, how good your line work is, you can go in there and delete some stuff, edit it, make some stuff darker or lighter. All depends on what you want to do for your hero portrait. Now, this project can start in Photoshop, but it has to end in Illustrator. So, I have a workflow which I'm going to use to bring this into Illustrator uh, in order to make my lines vector. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to use Selection Color Range. So if I go up here to where it says Select, I can go to Color Range. Now my settings and color range might be a little different than yours. Uh, let's go back a step really quick. So if you go over here to your Tools Palette in the very bottom, you will have your Quick Mask settings. If I double click on my Quick Mask settings, uh, yours are going to be set up to masked areas, there's going to be red, and your opacity is going to be at 50%. Um, I personally do not like using these settings. I always have it set to selected areas. Um, I don't like using red, so I go fluorescent green, and I like to bump the opacity up to 70%. So these are my settings in quick masks. If you want to follow along as I'm doing mine, you can, um, but this is not a tutorial for you to follow on step by step. Um, so right now I'm just going to hit OK. Say so OK, I'm going to go back to color range. And then when I go to color range, I cannot pick color range. And that is because I am in quick mask mode. Um, when you're in quick mask mode, color range will be grayed out. So two good ways to see if you're in color in quick mask mode is one, this looks like it's pushed in. See the mask area, that means you're in quick mask mode. You can go over to channels and then check over here and just let you know you're also in quick mask mode. So I'm just going to go over here and turn it off. I'm out of quick mask mode. Go to my layers, make sure I have this layer selected. I'm going to go back up to the top and hit select. Um, color range. In here, uh, I'm going to make sure that localized color clusters is unchecked. Fuzziness, I'm going to start off at 100%. And then I'm going to go over here and make sure that this is set up to my quick mask. All right, and this is on section. So if I click on the white, it'll select all the white. I can bump that up. And then I can just invert my selection, and that way I'm choosing all my black lines. All right. Um, you can do the opposite of that. You can go over here and choose the black uh, with this not inverted and set that up. But you might have to bump this up a little bit. Uh, so I like choosing the white and just inverting it. I think for this one, it works a little bit better. All right. So now I'm going to hit OK, 
and you can see it is now a selection you see the running ants now I can go over towards these paths and I can make the selection into a working path so I'm in my paths panel over here I have my running ant selection I go to paths and I go right over here if you hover over it it should say convert selection into paths make work path from section once I click on it you can see now I have a working path All right. double click and save the path that way it's saved and then make sure you save where you're at always remember command s is your best friend I'm just going to save this as a TIFF format, save it as a PSD, hit save, okay. All right, so now I have, I have all my line work here um, in past. Now how do I get into Illustrator? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my folder structure, and if you go into Original Artwork Gray, you should have self-portrait grayscale.iat this is a template that will open up in the default size in which we recommended in the PDF so now I have my file size or my page it is set up to um, 15 inches by 20 inches now I'm going to go back into Photoshop go to my paths and I'm going to hit A for my arrow tool or if you go down to your tools palo it's down here at the bottom you can have your direct selection tool, your path tool. So I'm in the black arrow, that's my path tool. I go and select my path layer in paths, and then now I can highlight over paths and select this path. Once I've selected it, I'm going to go to edit, copy, hotkeys, command C. Then I'm going to go into Illustrator. Now we get into Illustrator, I'm going to hit edit, paste or command V. Uh, the paste option is going to come up. Make sure you have compound shape fully editable. Hit OK. Now I have my shape in here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to object and expand. And then after that you want object and fill to expand and hit OK. If you do not expand it, it will not be fully editable inside of Illustrator. It will act funny. So make sure you expand it. Then I'm going to select black as my fill. It went in as a stroke. Let me make sure it's my fill color. And then that's how my line work looks after I went to Photoshop, cleaned it up, uh, made it into a selection, converted that selection to a path, and then pasted that path into Illustrator. Um, now this is just the black lines. I don't have any fills in here. But before I go any further, I'm going to select the colors in which I want to use for my artwork. So I already have this black right here. So I'm going to go to Marquee Tool. I'm going to make a box over here. And I have my black. I'm going to select that box, Option, Drag it. And then I'm going to have another box. So I'm going to select both these boxes, Option, Drag it. So I have four boxes. All right, I'm going to need a white. And then I'm going to pick a gray and a highlight. Make sure that these two grays aren't too similar to each other. A lot of times uh, if these colors are too close, this just kind of goes flat. So make sure there's a little bit of range between those two grays. So I have these two grays and then a black and a white. I'm going to select these four colors. And I know that these are the four colors I'm going to want to use. And I'm going to make a group into my swatches panel. The reason I'm going to do this is when I go back over here after I've selected this gray, I might accidentally hit this gray or that gray. And they might kind of look the same inside of here. And then all of a sudden now my illustration turns into a four or five color. I mean a five or six color uh, composition when I really can only use four. So to make my life a little bit easier, I select these four colors in which it's placed there, and I go to the group, a new color group. I'm going to hit OK. And then now I have the black, the dark gray, the light gray, and the white, in which I want for my composition. Remember, keep this here. Um, this is going to come in handy a little bit then. So now we have my hero portrait. 
There's a couple of cool things you can do here. So first, I'm going to select this. I'm going to option drag it just to show you something you could do. So this is a fully compound shape now inside of Illustrator. I can take the marquee tool, create a square. I can select, uh, let's say, that darker gray. All right. I'm going to send this darker marquee shape in which I made the square. I'm going to send it to the back. Okay. Once I've sent it to the back, I'm going to select my artwork and the box. So I have them both selected. Then I'm going to go to my Pathfinder tool. Don't have the Pathfinder tool over here. You go to Windows, Pathfinder. The hotkey is Command Function F9. All right. Now with both of these selected, I could go over here and hit Divide. Now once you divide it, if you go to the Direct Selection tool, I can go over here and delete that. I can change the color to these. All of these shapes now become individual, independent, editable shapes, which is pretty awesome. What decides what shape stays together is there's a gap. So if since there's nothing closing this off, this is all part of this one shape. But anytime there's a straight black line going all the way through it, this becomes an independent shape. So knowing that when I do my illustration, if I know I'm going to use this workflow, I would make sure that all of my lines <clears throat> close up if I want it to be one solid shape. All right. The problem with this illustration and doing this is that it's a lot of little pieces to grab. And I could be here all day grabbing all these little pieces, especially once I get into here um, with this small. It would be a lot of work or a big pain. So I wouldn't recommend doing this for this style of illustration, but if you have an illustration of lines that are a lot simpler and you don't have cross hatching in here, this can be a huge tool to benefit you. Um, I'm going to delete that right now. So what I'm going to do here is I have my line work. I'm going to go to my layers and I'm going to create some more layers in here and I'm going to pull them to the back and I'm going to lock this top layer. So this is all one layer. It's on the very top. Um, it's my black line work and then I will go to the layer underneath it and then I'm going to hit the pen tool and then I'm going to start deciding I'm doing this really quick what colors are going to be um, my darker values. So go over here. Go to my swatches. I know exactly which gray this is. I can send this to the back, I'm layering it. Um, and now, quickly, now I have my multiple shapes in here. I have my gray, my dark gray, and I could build up my my illustration to where I want it um, and get my values in there. So this is just a quick way that you can get your line work into Illustrator and start doing your hair portrait. I hope this helps.